Yeah, it was good, but the book was better. This has always been a fairly common refrain from moviegoers. Whenever a movie is adapted from a book, many parts of the book are left on the cutting room floor for various reasons, and invariably, book fans bemoan those losses as proof that the book was indeed better. And fair point, oftentimes this is true. But how about those times when the movie is actually better than the book? This does happen, and we're here to point out 12 such instances. Before we dive in, I want to take a moment to thank you for taking the time to click on this video. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. We're getting closer and closer to that magical 1000 number, and any support that would help put us over the top would be awesome. Thank you for your consideration. Two little rules here. First, the movie has to be based on the book, not just inspired by it. Secondly, both the movie and the book have to be good. And with that, in alphabetical order, here are the 12 movies we have selected for this list. Daniel Wallace's novel about the complications between a dying father and the son who feels he never knew him was a riveting tale that exhibited the fragilities of familial connections. When this novel was combined with Tim Burton's exceptional visual storytelling and an incredible cast, that's where the magic really happened. The movie explored Edward Bloom's own relationship with fact, fiction, and the more muddled than one may realize gray in the middle without removing any of the emotional heft behind it. In fact, it was felt more profoundly. All the anger, misunderstandings, and even distrust emanated from a place of love, and when those feelings could finally dissipate, it all recycles itself back into love. A story about a slow-witted yet kind-hearted man staggering his way through events of American history during the 1960s can make for excellent reading fare. But when Winston Groom's novel hit the big screen, it became a cultural touchstone. Aided by the soundtrack of the times, Robert Zemeckis' direction, and a once-in-a-lifetime toward the force performance by Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump the movie and Forrest Gump the character burrowed its way into many hearts. Over time, critics and otherwise have tried to ding the movie for being overly sentimental, but that misses its very point. Forrest never loses his childlike sentimentality, and he is equally rewarded and punished by it. There's no denying that Mario Puzo's 1969 novel was a masterpiece, and in many ways the first of its kind. But the novel doesn't hold a candle to the kind of influence that the movie had. Never mind its sequel, who many may say was better than the original, but there are many other intellectual properties that exist on the back of The Godfather, not limited to Goodfellas, A Bronx Tale, Scarface, Heat, Casino, and The Sopranos. It revived Marlon Brando's career while launching Al Pacino's and later Robert De Niro's. With a quotable language all to itself and iconic moment after iconic moment, The Godfather has a case to be the single greatest movie of all time. Charles Webb, the author of The Graduate, has stated that he was never comfortable with the attention that The Graduate, the film version, brought him. Interestingly enough, he saw the movie as, quote, distracting him from his status as a serious artist, unquote. That's rather unfortunate on his end, because the Dustin Hoffman, Catherine Ross, and Anne Bancroft project was a seriously good movie. Like Forrest Gump before it, it made excellent use of its soundtrack, primarily using Simon and Garfunkel. And the scene of Benjamin banging on the church window, yelling for Elaine, has been mimicked and parodied to no end. But it's the ending, with Benjamin and Elaine's triumph quickly fading into apprehension, that seals the deal for this one. Often thought of as the first summer blockbuster, Jaws has a special place in the history of cinema. 
It was only a year earlier that Peter Benchley's novel hit bookshelves, and the quick turnaround from paper to screen is a clear indication of its success. Limitations in production during the mid-1970s allowed director Steven Spielberg the opportunity to create tension by not displaying the shark, and instead allowing for yet another in a gargantuan line of John Williams's unforgettable orchestral themes to linger instead. The use of practical effects went on to influence multiple generations thereafter, and swung the doors wide open as to what was possible in movie making. And never before has the suggestion of needing a bigger boat been more prevalent. When it came to commercial success, film noir wasn't exactly the go-to in Hollywood during the mid to late 1990s, especially without erotic elements. So when James Elroy published L.A. Confidential in 1990, despite its quality, it probably wasn't on too many shortlists of books that needed a film adaptation. But that changed seven years later, and retro film noir came roaring back to the tune of nine Academy Award nominations, winning Best Supporting Actress for Kim Basinger and, naturally, Best Adapted Screenplay. They did all this by maintaining the characters while sprucing up the plot and adding just the right mix of glitz and glamour in recreating 1950s Los Angeles. Okay, Tolkien fans, no need to be upset. J.R.R. Tolkien is more than just an author. He spawned a new genre. To many, there are classics, there are all-time greats, and then there's The Lord of the Rings. All this is true, and while the three books that made up Tolkien's epic are irrefutably remarkable, there was something truly special about the Peter Jackson trilogy of movies that took it to the next level. Every single character came to life in a way that the jump from the page to the screen oftentimes does not allow. And the filmmakers employed delicate touches to Tolkien's story, leaving some parts out while adding others in without sacrificing Tolkien's intent in the least. Taking a fairy tale to the big screen is not an easy task. Taking William Goldman's The Princess Bride, an original fairy tale without countless adaptations to fall back onto the big screen, was an entirely different task. Maybe that's why the movie didn't arrive until 14 years later, but the transition was astonishingly successful. With such care given to the source material and obvious dedication given by all involved, The Princess Bride sprung to life in a way that both entertained and touched the hearts of all who watched it. With adventure, humor, and romance, this veritable classic had a little bit for everybody, and its rewatchability is through the roof. As you wish. If ever a novel was meant to find its way to a director, it was Robert Bloch's Psycho landing tenderly into the ever-loving arms of Alfred Hitchcock. The novel was a bit controversial, but that wasn't going to stop Hitchcock, who leaned into the controversy. The novel was also incredible, so for the movie to make it to this list, it needed to be even more incredible. And it was. Aside from the taut tension that Hitchcock infused into the action, his master of cinematography and character development carry the film to legendary status. And where would Norman Bates stand as a cinematic icon if not for Anthony Perkins' deft portrayal of him, offering a package of subtlety and madness? Anyone who has TBS or TNT beaming into their homes has probably at the very least seen a snippet of The Shawshank Redemption. What many of these casual viewers may not know is that it is based on a novella by, of all people, Stephen King. Despite the legendary status that the movie has taken on in years, it was a box office bomb upon its initial release. But word of mouth is a powerful thing, and The Shawshank Redemption became that one movie that everyone needed to see, and for good reason. Beginning with King, 
feeding through screenwriter and director Frank Darabont and flowing out from the actors on the screen was perhaps the greatest collection of characters ever assembled, each connecting with the audience in his own unique way. Only three movies have ever swept the Big Five at the Academy Awards. Best Picture, Director, Lead Actor, Lead Actress, and Screenplay. The last and most recent of these was The Silence of the Lambs in 1991. And how could it not, with Jonathan Demme leading a cast that included Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster, derived from Thomas Harris's exceptional novel, which took the psychological horror subgenre to new levels. The film shocked, yet excited, horrified, yet enchanted. It kept its audience on its toes the way Hannibal Lecter kept Clarice Starling on her toes. It broke the mold for how villains could be displayed on screen and is an early example of how the anti-hero relates to basic human nature. Harper Lee's novel is undoubtedly a beloved classic, and to this day it is essentially mandatory reading for schoolchildren in the United States, with its themes still resonating to the current day. The movie didn't stray all that far away from the novel, but what set it apart was Gregory Peck bringing Atticus Finch fully into the flesh. In the 60 plus years since his Academy Award winning performance, countless lawyers have credited Atticus Finch as either the initial spark or the very inspiration that got them involved in the law. And it's not just lawyers. People of all stripes of life have counted Atticus as a personal hero. The novel certainly contributed to that, but without Gregory Peck, Atticus would not have reached the status that he has. Thank you so much for taking the time to click on this video and watching it all the way through. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you'd give the video a like, perhaps share it with some friends, and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and ding the bell for future notifications. Thank you so much. Is there any other movie adaptation that I may have left out? Do you think anything that was on this list shouldn't belong? Please feel free to sound off in the comments, I'd love to hear what you think. Until next time, thank you so much again for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day.